And let's take a look at your Caribbean report for tonight. We start with CARICOM, where Dr. Denzel Douglas of St. Kitts and Nevis said CARICOM could be celebrating 10 years of solid achievement in the region's health sector development since the Nassau Declaration of 2001. Douglas has led the responsibility for the Human Resource Development, Health, and HIV and AIDS in a quasi-cabinet of the CARICOM Conference Heads of Government and was addressing a regional media representative clinic held on Friday afternoon in the margin's 32nd annual meeting of the CARICOM Conference Heads of Government, which will open in St. Kitts and Nevis on July 1st. Dr. Douglas told journalists that the community was the first in the world to provide actionable response for the 2001 United Nations General Assembly Special Session on HIV and AIDS and its subsequent declaration which led to the establishment of the Global Fund for HIV and AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria and helped to establish the Pan-Caribbean Partnership Against HIV and AIDS known as PAN-CAM. And in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Commission of Inquiry into the Otley Hall Marina and Shipyard Project in St. Vincent can now continue after the Eastern Caribbean Court of Appeals ruled that the proceedings were not biased as claimed by former Prime Minister Sir James Mitchell. The Commission, which was set up to determine who, if anyone, is culpable for the disappearance of monies allocated in the building of the marina, went on a two-year hiatus after the Prime Minister brought the legal challenge objecting to the proceedings, which he said were biased. Anthony Astefan, a lawyer for the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, said in this case, speaking on the ruling on Thursday, said one of the grounds for bias on which the Prime Minister relied was the sums letter issued by the Commissioner and the interim report that the Commissioner had sent out to the Director of Public Prosecution. The trial was completed in two days, and the court dismissed the claims of the application and discharged the injunction. The marina, which was built in 1993 when Mitchell's new Democratic Party was in office, was subsequently valued at between 3.5 million EC and 7 million EC, but left the nation in a debt of 200 million EC. And finally, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico's Governor Luis Fortuna has said that he is running for re-election next year. The pro-statehood Republican made the announcement Sunday before thanks thousands of delegates in the new Progressive Party. Fortuno is serving his first four-year term as leader of the U.S. Caribbean territory. Fortuno told backers that his administration is spurring economic growth across the island and vowed to build 100 new schools if re-elected in 2012. Fortuno has had to cut thousands of public jobs to narrow a sprawling budget deficit as Puerto Rico tries to emerge from the economic crisis. Its 16.2 percent unemployment rate is higher than that of any U.S. state. Governor Luis Fortuno was previously Puerto Rico's non-voting delegate in the U.S. Congress. This Caribbean report is brought to you by MLK Tires, keeping you rolling right. And that's your Caribbean report for tonight. And the University of the Virgin Islands Extension Service offers a wide variety of classes for adults. They completed their computer class, and here are the proud graduates being honored. <laughs> Dante McIntosh. And what are you doing today? Today I am going to graduate from UVI's computer class. And which is this the advanced class or the basic? 
the basic class. And what encouraged you to come to this class? What encouraged me to come to this class is that I know that I was going to get a good education of of knowing about computers. So you like computers? Yes. And how old are you? I'm 10 years old. We are so grateful for these young men, these... <sighs> I saw this young man when he was a little boy. My children and his generation raised up. I know his mom and his dad. So it just, if he was my own son, I couldn't be more proud of him. I am so proud of him because there are so much negative with young people and also with boys, men, young men. And so I'm so proud of him to the point I told him I'm going to adopt him. He's going to be a, my adopted son because I know his parents are not going to let him go. So I will just be his adopted mom. I'm so proud of him. And I'm also proud of Mr. Felix. I'm proud to see young people because I have five of my own. They're all grown. And so I'm proud to see young people move on and do something with their lives. And, and again, congratulations to all of those students of the computer class. When we come back from this break, Travel and Style is up next. Stay with us. Every Man contest was this weekend. Here are some highlights. Your second runner up. Second runner up. Those two. Contender number one, Akeem Kushan Adonis Josiah. The first runner-up for this evening's competition of Captain of Travel and Style. Your first runner-up is contender number three, Christopher Jose Delete Rivera. Your new Captain of Travel and Style 2011-2012 is also Mr. Queen Baptiste.